of Wholehearted Bookkeeping Cooperative. I'm also part of the Oasis Solidarity Collective. We do trainings and accompaniment uh, for people trying to like start co-ops or grow their co-ops or deepen their co-ops. The question I asked here is where are you coming from? Uh, I live in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, how did you get here? I flew. I wanted to take the train, but <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> and um, wh what's the status of uh, one or both of these co-ops, uh, startups, convergence, existing? Uh, so Wholehearted is uh, officially four years old. Um, so, you know, we've been saying like we're kind of going from the startup phase to like trying to be like sustainable. Um, Oasis has actually been around for seven years, um, but it's not anyone's like full-time thing. It's a little bit more of like, um, you know, an additional project. So it's, yeah, but it's, it's going. And we just uh, renamed it. Um, it used to be called the Training Collective. Awesome, awesome. Um, so coming to the conference is a big commitment. Uh, what were you seeking from the conference? Um, well, like I always say, this is like my favorite conference because it feels a little bit like a family reunion. Like I get to see all these people in the movement who I've known for years and like catch up with them and um, yeah, just like enjoy being together. Um, also this year Wholehearted was able to send four people, um, you know, and for us we're remote, we're like all over the country. So this is like only the second time we've all been together in four years. Um, and, and that was really amazing and I think yeah, just seeking like, you know, examples and like learnings from other co-ops and um, yeah, a lot of a lot of good stuff kind of germinating. What has helped your co-op the most? Or? Um, so I would say coming out of this specific conference, some of the things that are wanting to potentially move forward is we had uh, really good conversations about like union co-ops and specifically we're looking to add health insurance and feeling like that might be a good route for us to be able to do it and then also you know that we would be able to be a unionized cooperative um so yeah i think we're excited to like move that forward um we learned good things about um you know i went to like a rainbow grocery onboarding workshop and like just learning about how much training you know, and the process that they have um, for bringing people on. Also the fact, like this kind of blew my mind, but they, like basically they require all workers to become owners within 18 months. And just sort of like that approach to like, you know, membership um, was something that, that struck me and that I want to think about. Um, and I know my, my coworkers went to some of the conflict workshops and I think got some good tools out of there um, and then just I would say for me personally I got really excited I met um, I met a wonderful new friend named Dilcia Molina um, from like the Washington DC area who's part of Escoba Magica and Madre Tierra and she was telling me about their co-ops and like some of the practices they bring into cleaning like that goes you know deeper than just like cleaning a house um, but then also she was telling me about the, the tanda or, that they have and like that just really blew my mind because she was saying they've been doing it for 20 years, how that, num how that whole system worked was, was pretty cool because I'd heard of those before but just to hear such a like successful thriving example was really cool and thinking you know beyond just co-ops right the solidarity economy is a lot of things and it's a lot of indigenous like black you know ancestral practices it's not just these sort of like llc's and corporations and and whatever um so that that was cool she was she was a very cool person to meet with the the lessons that you're learning from these benefit one or both of the co-ops i mean i was even thinking not necessarily part of the co-op like you know more just like part of the community or like it could be you know, because she was, she was like, you do this with people you know and trust, right? This isn't necessarily something you start off with strangers. And I was like, there's so many members of the different co-ops, like in New York City. And if you could get a group um, who might want to do this together, kind of out of that, um, that, that could be really powerful. Yeah, I think that um, to strengthen the tandas and uh, those other types of loan systems, 
um, I think targeting them for like donations or financing could be a pretty clever way because I feel like some of the ones I've seen, yeah, the issue, you know, they work, but sometimes the turnaround isn't quick enough. People mm -hmm. got to wait quite a while and, you know, they've done all the work of, of setting up a functioning system. We've been thinking about doing that here locally because mm. we, yeah, we know a few and um, that's, the, that's one of the main challenges that we've seen. Mm. Yeah, it works really well, but it's not like still not fast enough. Mm. Um, now I'm sure there's, of course, other ones that are fast enough. Outside of the conference, what has helped your co-ops the most? Just generally, like what's helped our co-ops the most? Um, so thinking about Wholehearted, um, definitely like when we were starting, you know, we had sort of these like, I would almost say like guardian angels who got us like our first clients or just, you know, helped us get early clients. And it was people, you know, from the co-op like movement, um, or at least some of them, um, like specifically Steven Switzer really, you know, helped us out. Um, and yeah, that, I think that really made a big difference. We've also had um, a couple of like big nonprofits that are in the co-op space, like specifically the Sustainable Economy Law Center and Cooperación Santa Ana, who have become sort of anchor clients for us, where they really like, you know, hold hold a they. We give them a lot of hours, and that enables us to also work with like smaller co-ops and and startups and people who can't pay. Um, as much so like yeah just like these connections and like um solidarity within the co-op movement and i see like those clients really valuing our experience as a co-op as something that they want to be like connected with um and then in terms of like capital you know we started off with like some loans from friends and family which was good and then we were also able to access financing from leaf um which we just like paid back and it's really exciting to say like we've now done two full cycles of of financing and um yeah though that's that's been super critical um and then in terms of oasis um you know we got our start originally um like rebecca lurie and tammy shapiro um like bringing this idea they got different uh, nonprofits to basically donate some curriculum or actually no they got paid for it <laughs> um, so but to, to share curriculum and teach us some curriculum and that kind of became like the foundation that we use and that we've adapted a lot over the years um, and then yeah just different like co-op developers or academies like seeking us out you know as people who are worker owners and and have had that experience you know, as opposed to only relying on these like co-op developers who don't necessarily have the, that experience. Um, so that's that's been really important. What's something unexpected that's helped your co-ops in general? In general, I can say with Oasis, like one of the one of the things that's been really a big a big part of like our history was that we had this in conflict, this internal conflict that had to do with people's you know, other kind of co-op affiliations and things that had happened outside the collective, but that were like really affecting the collective. And it was this conflict that was deep and painful. And it went on for like, I think about two years. Like it was, it was really, really rough. And then we were finally able to get connected with um, a mediator who like actually was able to kind of get in and like get people communicating and dialoguing. And um, and that was called the Stoke Collective. Um, and yeah, that it's been such a, a game changer. Um, you know, and again, I, I want to give credit to like Tammy Shapiro, who was at Nick Knock then, who, you know, kept trying, like, you know, when the first meteor didn't work out, like trying to find another one. Um, and to the members who were involved, like who were able to like kind of push through and, and keep working on it. So I would say it was sort of unexpected that that conflict was able to transform and I feel like it created this really strong foundation for us now um, you know the the other thing well that has and it's been sad because it's like we've been through all of this transformation and, and transitions and now right we have this client who's had a lot of cash flow issues and basically hasn't been able to pay us for like two years um, and it's it's 
it's at the right now we're at risk of like like members are like going on leave because like we can't pay ourselves and it's really sad to me that basically this one government contract that's like not working out is like you know potentially shutting down something that's been really strong hopefully not <laughs> where do you go locally for assistance for wholehearted we um We've reached out most recently to like CUNY Loss Clinic um, and they helped us with, um, we're transi we transitioned from being an LLC co-op taxed as a partnership to being an LLC taxed as a C corporation, <laughs> just, just this very technical thing, but it involves like changing your bylaws and like stuff like that. So they were able to, you know, provide some assistance with that and then like the um, corporate corporate transparency act and how that might affect us so so that's been helpful awesome um what's something you wish your co-op had your co-ops had to support your efforts um i would it's funny it's like the opposite like wholehearted we're kind of maxed out on work um because it's just a field that's not I think there's just not enough bookkeepers who like can do co-op bookkeeping, which is why part of why we launched this apprenticeship program um, at Oasis. Like we are looking for more work and we are also looking for grants. And especially like the thing I keep seeing is groups that want to start a co-op that have a lot going for them and they, they knock on all the doors and there's nothing for them. You know, there's like all this city funding out there, but it's all already like planned out. You know, there's nothing available for people who aren't affiliated with a group already um and that just feels really hard to me you know because it like keeps happening like over and over again and like we want to like be like you know let's go like we've got the knowledge like you've got the drive like this could be like a perfect combination and it's just like we can't do it for free right now you know and and there's just like 3.7 million dollars and like none of it is available um so that's hard. So, yeah, money. Money for, like, for these other groups that are wanting to get in who aren't just already part of the existing nonprofits. What was the best or most useful part of the conference? All right, best part of the conference, I'm going to say my personal highlights. I really, I always enjoy the party. Like, it's just, like, so nice to, like, celebrate with these people who you work so hard with year-round, and then it's like, let's just enjoy each other. Um, so I enjoy that. I also really enjoyed Rested Root had this grounding chamber because it's like a lot of like stimulation, you know, and like it was just so it was a beautiful space and I was able to go in there and, and chill and that was great. Um, and yeah, like most like useful, like something I think I want to take back with me. Um, I'm really I'm excited about this time the idea I don't know where you know where it's gonna go or if it's gonna go somewhere um, I'm excited about unionizing and like trying to get health insurance and like trying to be part of the labor movement in that way um, yeah and I'm I'm hopeful about like some of these conflict tools that I think my my fellow uh, co-workers are bringing back is there anything going on in your co-ops that you are proud of or excited about yeah so I think I mentioned the apprenticeship program that we piloted last year um, like with two people and it was really exciting to see that by the end of it one of both of them were working as bookkeepers um, and so this year we're doing it with six people and yeah I'm 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 jazzed about this because this is something I've been like dreaming about for years and to see it actually like happening is amazing um, and I, I, I personally kind of feel like this is something that could, you know, expand, like if we had more resources kind of going into it. Um, and it was funny. At, I think at one point this weekend, someone said to me, like, he was like, we've got to talk about how we scale up like co-op accountants and bookkeepers. And I was like, yes, like, let's, let's have that conversation. And I do think, you know, everyone's talking about like the ecosystem, da, 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 da. And I think it would be appropriate for some of the nonprofits to be like putting resources into building that up as part of the ecosystem building. Um, All right. So shameless plugging. Shameless plugging. So 
uh, wholeheartedbookkeeping.com. Um, we do bookkeeping, we do consulting, we do trainings. Um, we do, you know, depending on like the time of the year, sometimes get maxed out, but we love to refer people to like the other bookkeeping co-ops that we're, you know, aligned with. Um, and we, we love to do trainings. We love to help people do like inclusive budgeting processes within their co-ops where you're like getting everyone involved and in setting the budget priorities. Um, so yeah, hit us up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.